Ladies and gentlemen, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, I once had a presence on Twitter. Now, this is when I was the, this was like three years ago now, going on three years. I haven't been on Twitter. I deleted my account roughly three years ago. Thank God. It was the best decision I ever made. Nothing good comes from having a presence on Twitter. I had like 30,000, close to 30,000 people following me on Twitter. And at that point, around that point, the Huffington Post called me the biggest Bernie Sanders booster on the internet, and the Washington Post called me the unofficial scribe of Sanders' most hardcore voters. And my articles in The Hill, the Huffington Post, Salon would go viral. And every day on Twitter, I would get into arguments, not with Trump supporters, with people who, uh, you know, supported Madam Secretary, the wonderful Hillary bots. They were very good people. And they were more, they were, they were more belligerent and apoplectic and, you know, oftentimes just the most, the nastiest, most underhanded, despicable types of people. They actually had a greater animus towards Bernie supporters than they did towards anyone else. They, they claim the past four years that they didn't like. I mean, they devoted their lives, and we see what's happening right now with the White House uh, nomination of Neera Tandon. So the White House has with, withdrawn her nomination. Well, we'll get to that in a second. Um, we'll get to that in a second. It's really interesting because you're looking at Twitter is a place. So Biden's t t B uh, Neera Tandon is out as Biden's OMB nominee. <laughs> Neera Tandon withdraws, uh, withdraws as Biden's OMB nominee. You would think in a perfect world that she devoted her online presence and in many ways life to opposing President Trump. Near attendant pres President Biden's controversial nominee of, uh, to head the Office Man uh, of Management and Budget has withdrawn her nomination. So this was, I had a Twitter presence really before I became a supporter of President Trump, generally before I became a supporter of President Trump. And I just remember the first person that blocked me, one of the first, first people that blocked me after Clinton lost was near attendant. And I'm actually going to say, I'm actually going to say something in defense, in her defense. She should not have withdrawn, but, or they should have stuck by her, but she, it, perhaps she's a, a, a remnant or a relic of the I'm with her crowd. Maybe they actually want to move away from um, a kind of, so this is, this is Politico, meet Hillary Clinton's anger translator in an interview for Politico's off-message podcast, longtime Clinton confidant. Tandon sounds off on Bernie Sanders, the 2016, okay, and, and Vladimir Putin. Okay, so <laughs> the past four years, you've had this individual claim without evidence that Trump was working with Russia and Putin swung uh, 2016. This, there was no concrete or direct evidence. There wasn't any evidence at all. The, the Steele dossier was purchased by Clinton. Um, the fact that we knew the DNC railroaded Bernie Sanders because Debbie Wasserman Schultz was forced to resign, well, that's not Putin's fault. <laughs> they, don't, they, they think that Putin hacked the DNC because he wanted to inform the country Bernie Sanders was cheated. It wasn't that Bernie was completely shafted and railroaded by, um, by Democrats, which, by the way, Bernie Sanders himself has erased from history. So that should tell you that should tell you everything you need to know, to know about the left. Bernie shouldn't really have opposed Tandon's uh, nomination, even though she would oppose um, his policies, which the left wants, the far left want, the, or the progressives want. Medicare for all, Green New Deal legislation. So I don't know if she would be the best office of, uh, nominee to head the Office of Management and Budget if she doesn't believe at all in um, any of the progressive policies that Bernie Sanders wanted and his voters wanted, but neither does Biden. 
So the whole thing is a dis- is the dysfunctional mess. A dysfunctional mess. By the way, hit subscribe to this channel right now. We will have a live stream later this evening by around probably 9.30 or so. And so this is yet another, I mean, I'm just in my long-winded, yet another victory for President Trump. Trump basically forced out one of his key rivals in cyberspace. Now, it, it wasn't a direct political rival, but it was... This is, this, th- like I said, Neera Tandon should have been championed by the Biden administration. She, d- she devoted every single day to not only disparaging Trump, but Bernie Sanders, which is what Democrats want to do. Bernie is, a, is, in many ways, a fake and a phony and a fraud, politically. He accepted it, but this was perhaps a bit too much for him to handle. Then you had Senator Joe Manchin. But Twitter and President Trump, the legacy of President Trump on Twitter, is un- undermined her chances, which is hilarious because you would think that go- you would think that that undermining or demeaning the left, while at the same time, I mean, going after Trump and cyberspace, which is what she did every day, while at the same time keeping the left at bay. That's exactly the Democratic Party playbook. That's exactly the playbook that Bernie Sanders himself helped um, craft. He upheld this. They, they, they railroaded him and cheated him in 2016. And so what did, what did Ms. Tandon do wrong? Nothing. Like, honestly, I'm not, def- I'm not defending her because she probably, she doesn't, I'm sure she thinks I'm like a really horrible, you know, Bernie, former Bernie supporter who voted for Trump. And so that's exactly like what's going on. You know, Bernie, actually, she's right about that. There's a direct line between Bernie 2016 and President Trump. We want an end to never-ending counterinsurgency conflicts. People who voted for Trump and perhaps voted for Bernie Sanders before him want an end to perpetual never-ending conflict. It took one month for Biden to show who he was in terms of foreign policy. That is an issue that propels me. That's what drives me. I want Americans home from never-ending counterinsurgency conflicts, never-ending attempts at regime change and interventions. To me, that's obviously a moral position to take when you're looking at, like, people say, whoa, climate change. Okay, those those are important issues. But you don't want to put a whole bunch of countries in one region of the world that's a powder keg. And, oh, by the way, these, these are nuclear Uh, powered countries or armed countries and you don't want Americans off in the same regions where their parents fought so you have the, the children of veterans fighting in the same quagmires because of people like Biden and Bush and the Lincoln project and and if you want you want to look at horrendous decisions look at the Lincoln project the Bush, Cheney, and Rumsfeld foreign policy, look how they've imploded. They're completely disgraced. Every single rival to Trump has now, <laughs> like, they've, they've witnessed the repercussions of their own actions. They, or, or, or their skeletons are now coming out of the closet. So the Lincoln Project is, is disgraced. Andrew Cuomo in New York, completely disgraced. His, his political career is done. You had a White House deputy press secretary, done, had to resign. And now you have Neera Tandon being forced out because of Democrats. She's too much for Joe Manchin and also um, Bernie Sanders. And tell me, and I, this is like, I, I want to I do a friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ear, like kind of, you know, defense it's it's not i'm not i'm not praising her i'm explaining that you know what what did she do wrong i want to know this is she did exactly what the democrats wanted she did nothing wrong for i mean the democrat she did a lot wrong in my view <laughs> i'm talking i'm putting my democratic liberal apoplectic uh morally superior um you know, had on where, you know, Trump worked with Putin 
and Bernie Sanders and Jill Stein also worked with Putin and Tulsi Gabbard also worked with Putin and um, you know Trump uh, is the is an orange uh, menace and a Cheeto Mussolini and and suddenly now we have Biden who is bringing normality uh, and uh, you know against the uh, pagans people against goodness and normality and oh uh, I'm putting that kind of Hillary bought hat on. But, I mean, in reality, if you look at politics, just objectively, there's no reason why the Biden's administration would have to jettison this nominee. There's no reason. Why? It's because the left is completely dysfunctional. Trump won again. Every one of his political rivals has bitten the dust in some manner. And she simply upheld, like, she should have been the OMB director. This is a fact, but near Tanya withdraws his nominee for Office of Management and Budget. But you're talking about somebody who was so, who had such a, an influential or profound or provocative presence on Twitter Twitter is the worst place in the world. I don't know how when it will when people will realize that they should get off of Twitter. Like how many jobs and uh, opportunities have been lost on Twitter? It was the worst thing for President Trump. Trump allocated more funding to historically black colleges and universities than any president ever. He signed prison reform legislation. He signed an executive order combating anti-Semitism on college campuses. He renegotiated NAFTA into the USMCA. These are accomplishments. These are things that nobody talks about. Nobody talks about when it comes to Trump. And it's because of Twitter. I mean, it hurt President Trump as well. It's designed... It's designed to amplify left-leaning ideas. But what happens is the, left the, the ideas themselves are not ideas that, that actually resonate with the majority of the country. When people say, well, you know, polls show that Medicare for All is popular. Yeah, except when you find out that you have to pay for it through higher taxes. I'm not against Medicare for All in principle. If, you, if it's feasible, great. I I have I have a, one of my uncles in Europe in France you know a decade ago to, over a decade ago told me that he had like open heart surgery and it was like you know one hundred and fifty dollars this was maybe twelve thirteen fourteen years ago maybe longer than that okay and so if it worked but again we have three hundred twenty million Americans and. We spend more on a military budget than the, what, the, the next 11, 12 countries combined. Again, I, like, I support President Trump, but I'm liberal on certain things or even progressive on certain things. Immigration, Medicare for all. Okay, but I want a strong Second Amendment. There's, there are millions of people like me, independent voters. I would be, I would be categorized as an independent voter now. I'm not an ideologue. People might say that I am, but I'm not at all. <laughs> you can't be an ideologue if you supported Bernie Sanders, had all your um, articles going viral in 2016, and then supported President Trump. That's not what an ideologue does. You find a correlation between Bernie Sanders and Trump because you see that there's an obvious one. And again, Tandon was correct about that. <laughs> She is 100% right on a bunch of things, perhaps for reasons that I don't agree with. But there is a correlation between Bernie Sanders and Trump, a direct correlation. She did exactly what the Democratic Party wanted. She went after both le the, the far left and Trump. That's, that's the playbook. That's Biden's playbook. The I'm with her playbook is Biden's playbook, really. And who do you think propped up Biden? It was Clinton voters. Now, uh, now I'm going to defend uh, Madam Secretary. N not really, but you know what I mean. Who do you think? Who do you think voted for Biden? It was Clinton. The Clinton machine propped up Biden. It was it, Biden should thank Hillary Clinton every day of his life. 
Okay, I'm not saying this in defense of either of them. <laughs> but this is, this is another triumph for President Trump. Why? This is hilarious. The Lincoln Project every day on Twitter is now completely and utterly disgraced. Okay? Completely disgraced. They will never be political operatives within the Democratic Party because they were, they were disgraced, by the way, even before one of the co-founders and the potential allegations against the other co-founders. They were... The Bush, Cheney, and Rumsfeld years were the worst time in American politics since Vietnam. They got us into never-ending counterinsurgency conflicts. At least, at least Vietnam ended, but we still, have a, we still have a presence in those regions of the world. And President Obama got us into the region that, pre, that Biden said, oh, well, we have to defend our interests there. It's like we shouldn't even have a presence there. But I want to know, like, what... <laughs> the fact that Trump's legacy forced a nominee out says all you need to know about, A, how influential Trump is, and the fact that he runs the Republican Party. And in 2022, you're going to get an even stronger show of support with Matt Gates, Jim Jordan, Devin Nunes. They'll take over the Republican Party. They'll take over the Republican Party. But Trump basically forced Democrats to withdraw this nomination because they, they tried to make the rules, they tried to make everything about Twitter. They tried to make everything about Trump and his words and his rhetoric and his, and now they have to utilize that standard against themselves. And it's not really about actually a value system. This, this individual made too many um, adversaries on the left. That's really what it comes down to. And she did exactly what Democrats want, like wanted her to do, she, or she, what, what, Democra what, what liberal Democrats or neoliberals or whatever they're, they're called nowadays, centrist, corporatist Democrats. She did exactly what they all do. But she paid the price. She should be, she should be Biden's director. But she's not. <laughs> because they're completely and utterly dysfunctional. Yet another victory for Trump. So you have the Lincoln Project, Cuomo, now this nomination, uh, Deputy Press Secretary resigning. This was in, this is in the past month, just a month. Now every little thing that took place, oh my God, oh my God, he fired somebody, and, 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 and oh my God, he fired somebody, oh! And let's wait, we talked to, we talked to this person, and this person said that Trump, uh, everything was obsessed over. Now nothing's obsessed over. And even worse things are taking place. I mean, you really have to, you, you have to give it up to media and their not just concerted effort to sweep everything under the rug and to just kind of mitigate every, like, obvious political victory for Trump and political disaster for, for, for Democrats. This is a disaster for Democrats, by the way. This is probably the worst thing that Democrats could have done. They should have stuck by uh, Tandon. They should have stuck by Tandon. Now you're going to get... This is just the worst thing politically for them for many, many reasons. And I'm like kind of... I'm defending her from the vantage point of a very sober analysis of the Democratic Party. This is what they do. And now they're going... Now they're... <laughs> They're penalizing the same people who helped get them the White House. So that can't be a good thing. Anyway, give me your thoughts below. Hit subscribe right now. Be here. I mean, it can't, it can't be a good thing for them. It's a great thing for Trump. It's fine, fine by me. I support President Trump. I want peace. I don't want... I, I want... I want a, a, a foreign policy that isn't a hawkish neoconservative, smart power type of horrendous foreign policy that leads to never-ending counterinsurgency conflicts. I'm not a person who blamed Russia for all, like, you know, for, for everything the past four years and then said, oh my God, how? Oh my God, our democracy. Give me your thoughts below. This is another victory for Trump. I mean, it really is a victory for President Trump. It's pretty hilarious, too. Um, 
And it just shows how di utterly dysfunctional. And here, and it's like Bernie Sanders had a problem with this nomination, but he didn't have a problem with getting railroaded by the DNC. I mean, it's like he's a purely a political animal. He's a political creature in every way, shape, and form. He had to unendorse Cenk Uger. I mean, can, this is, the left is like completely unhinged. Give me your thoughts below. Thank you so much. Be here in a couple of hours for the live stream. Thank you.